The next presentation, the next individual presentation is in the area of biology. Eric Chen is from the Canyon Crest Academy in San Diego, California. His mentor is Dr. Rami Maro, professor of computational chemistry and biophysics at the University of California in San Diego. Eric? Hello, everybody, and good afternoon. My name is Eric Chen, and my project is Discovery of Novel Influenza Endonuclease Inhibitors to Fight Flu Pandemic. Influenza viruses pose grave threats to human health. Seasonal flu alone causes between 3 and 5 million cases of severe illness every year and up to half a million deaths worldwide. Pandemic flus can be far more devastating. The 1918 Spanish flu killed about 50 million people. Currently, new flu strains in animals could cause a pandemic at any time. Both highly lethal avian flu strains, H5N1 and H7N9, are a single mutation away from human-to-human -human transmission, which could lead to the next big flu pandemic. Our preparations for the next pandemic are also insufficient. Vaccines take several months to develop and may not be effective in all individuals. Antiviral drugs can be used to treat infected individuals and stop the spread of a pandemic, but current antiviral drugs are losing their effectiveness due to resistant flu strains. In fact, 35% of all H7N9 viruses are already resistant to Tamiflu, or Oseltamivir, the leading antiviral drug. Thus, there is an urgent need for novel antivirals. Current antiviral drugs target the M2 ion channel protein and uraminidase, structural proteins involved in viral entry and release, respectively. Instead, Targeting the viral transcription machinery offers the possibility of developing a new class of anti-flu medicine. The heterotrimeric RNA-dependent RNA polymerase of the influenza virus is composed of the PA, PB1, and PB2 subunits. Influenza viruses are unable to synthesize their own 5' caps and instead perform a unique action called cap snatching. This process is initiated when the PB2 subunit binds to host cap pre-mRNA PA then cleaves this cap off, and PB1 uses this cap as a primer for viral transcription. Without the host cap, the virus cannot trick the host machinery into making viral proteins, and therefore blocking the endonuclease will prevent the virus from propagating. The PA endonuclease is also highly conserved among influenza strains, meaning inhibitors should have broad efficacy and reduced resistance. Finally, the lack of a PA human counterpart facilitates the design of highly selective and non-toxic inhibitors. In this project, I will use a computer-aided approach, along with biological assays, in order to expedite the discovery of new endonuclease inhibitors as possible new flu medicine. The crystal structure of the PA endonuclease is shown here, which I was able to resolve to a resolution of 2.3 angstroms. However, crystal structures provide only a single snapshot. In order to gain new insights, I perform molecular dynamic simulations which use supercomputer power to simulate proteins' dynamics in solution. This generates thousands and thousands of confirmations, which can then be clustered to reveal various subpockets. One structural feature of the endonuclease is two manganese ions at the center of the protein active site, coordinated by several highly conserved residues. These manganese ions offer the possibility of developing chelating inhibitors. Thus, I adopted a ligand-based approach, building three-dimensional pharmacophore models based on several known inhibitors. This allows for the identification of compounds that retain vital key characteristics, yet also exhibit novel and diverse scaffolds. Several inhibitors of the endonuclease have been identified in the past, but a lack of structural information precluded further development. Nevertheless, these inhibitors were able to provide a basis for my pharmacophore model, which was built using the ROCS program. The top pharmacophore model was chosen through validation with receiver operator characteristics curves. Next, I performed a virtual screen. The Cambridge ExpressPIC screening library was to be used, but first it was filtered with OpenEye filter software in order to remove any undesirable compounds. These were chemicals that were known aggregators, had reactive functional groups, were predicted to be poorly soluble or worse, or were violators of Lipinski's rule of five 
a commonly used metric for characterizing drug-like compounds. This reduced the library to about 100,000 compounds, which was then virtually screened with the top Pharmaco4 model. Top hits were manually inspected for likely metal binding activity, and the top 237 candidate compounds were ordered for experimental characterization. To test the ability of each compound to inhibit the endonuclease, I set up a FRET-based assay. Because PA can cleave DNA as efficiently as it can cleave RNA, I used a single-stranded DNA oligonucleotide substrate, dual labeled with a 5' FAM donor fluorophore and a 3' Tamra quencher. Endonuclease cleavage separates the fluorophore and quencher, increasing fluorescence, and the ability of each compound to inhibit this activity was monitored. The assay was done in 96 well plates for reasonably high throughput screening, and PA was expressed and purified from E. coli. To ensure that endonuclease activity is indeed from PA, a key metal coordinating residue 119, a glutamic acid, was mutated to alanine, and the result is purified and used as a negative control, which had no activity. This ensured that activity was from PA and not from E. coli contaminants. I tested compounds at various concentrations and calculated the rate of increase in fluorescence, VM. IC50 values, the concentration at which 50% inhibition occurred, was found using dose response curves and nonlinear curve fitting. To ensure that compound activity was not due to aggregators or fluorescent artifacts, I set up a second gel-based assay. M13 bacteriophage DNA was used as a substrate, and endonuclease cleavage was monitored on a DNA agarose gel. When, en when endonuclease activity is inhibited, DNA degradation can be prevented, seen easily on this gel. These results were consistent with the FRET-based assay. From the initial 237 virtual screening hits, I identified six new endonuclease inhibitors with an IC50 below 50 micromolar. They exhibit a number of diverse scaffolds. Additionally, when I performed cytotoxicity tests with MDCK cells, quantified with methylene blue staining, I found that the majority of them are not cytotoxic. A further viral cytopathic assay also showed that two of these inhibitors had antiviral activity, protecting infected cells from dying. In order to further characterize how these inhibitors interacted with the PA, I performed in silico docking experiments. Schrodinger's glide program was used to find top binding poses with previously resolved tertiary structures as well as the molecular dynamics ensembles I generated. This reveals the interactions between protein and ligand, elucidating binding mechanism. For all of my inhibitors, I had metal chelating groups interacting with the two manganese ions as well as other groups interacting with residues lining the protein pocket. In the case of compound D03, shown here, the tyrosine, or the, sorry, the aromatic ring on one arm may be having pi pi stacking interactions with tyrosine 24. The chloral group on the same arm may be having electrostatic interactions with arginine 84. And the methoxy group on the other arm may be having hydrogen bonding interactions with arginine 124. Next, I per performed structure activity relationship analysis by testing 21 commercially available analogs to my compounds in the endonuclease assay. By comparing differences between structure and activity, I can identify critical groups on my compounds and therefore have important information for optimization. In the case of compound D03, docking studies predicted that both the chloro group and the methoxy group would be vital for inhibitor function. Indeed, here I found that removing either one of these two groups decreased affinity by more than 100-fold. Overall from this analysis, I identified 10 additional inhibitors with an IC50 below 50 micromolar and four additional inhibitors with an IC50 below 2 micromolar. In total, I've identified 16 new compounds with an IC50 below 50 micromolar. Based on their metal chelating scaffolds, they can be grouped into five distinct classes. Also, I identified six inhibitors with an IC50 below 2 micromolar, making them more potent than EGCG, a green tea compound which has been recognized as one of the most potent endonuclease inhibitors discovered thus far with an IC50 of 2.4 micromolar. In summary, I was able to use a multidisciplinary approach, combining computer modeling, virtual screening, and molecular docking with various bioassays to validate results in order to find new endonuclease inhibitors. And I was able to find a number of new potent influenza endonuclease inhibitors. They have good potential for development into real flu medicine. Also, molecular docking and structure activity relationship analysis provided important information for further drug design and optimization. Finally, I was able to do this with a quick and efficient computer-aided approach. 
These inhibitors have been patented through UCSD, and a publication of part of this work has been accepted to a peer-reviewed journal for which I am the first author. In the future, I'd like to collaborate to synthesize and test more potent endonuclease inhibitors with, and uh, based designs based on structural information. Some of the scaffolds I have found share similarities with those of clinically approved HIV integrase inhibitors. And I'm working with medicinal chemists in order to synthesize new metal chelating libraries based on this information. I'm resolving co-crystal structures of my inhibitors and the endonuclease, which will both validate the molecular docking studies and provide new insights. Performing docking and pharmacophore model-based virtual screening to identify inhibitors to other influenza targets, such as polymerase subunit PV2, allows for the development of a cocktail therapy, similar to what is being done in HIV, in which a number of inhibitors may more effectively curtail viral resistance. Finally, a similar approach may speed up the discovery and development of life-saving medicine for other diseases as well. Here are my references. I would like to thank Dr. Romy Amaro and Dr. Gunsheng Feng of UCSD, as well as Dr. Ian Wilson of the Scripps Research Institute for allowing me to do my work in their labs. I'd also like to thank the Siemens Foundation and College Board for allowing me, giving me this opportunity to present. I'd also like to thank the George Washington University for being gracious hosts. Finally, I'd like to thank you all for your time and for listening. Thank you.